Well, welcome back to Bland Gaming. Uh, I am Deeb, your host, and I'm happy to report to you today that I have remembered to hold my phone sideways instead of holding it vertical. Hey, so I'm still homesick. Uh, I live on the West Coast where supposedly there's a big, huge uh, winter frost like storm of 2024. It's on its way down here. So uh, I'm still at home. Um, my kids are at school. My wife is out of town. Uh, so I figured I would just me and the dog. I'd go ahead and kind of give you guys a glimpse of the bland gaming lair, at least a part of it. Um, one of the things about my career is I do have to kind of keep my identity secret. See, I have a secret identity. Yeah. Uh, so I can't show you my whole office um, in here, even though this is my home office. But uh, I do want to show you, uh, I guess this is my really, my miniatures corner. Uh, something I don't talk about a lot on my channel is that I am really into building and painting miniatures, uh, all kinds of miniatures. It's kind of like I tell my friends, you know, there are some guys that have jet skis and there are guys that are nerds. And uh, although, you know, I, I'm to work out and I enjoy, you know, doing typically non-nerdy things, um, I definitely enjoy my nerd hobbies. I'm most at peace. As a matter of fact, uh, my number one stress reliever is actually painting miniatures. It's the one thing that kind of brings my stress level down and it's how I kind of uh, self-treat treat myself. So anyway, so this corner is really, um, this is my miniatures corner here. And this is not even all of it. This is just mostly some Flames of War stuff and then also some Team Yankee uh, stuff that I've got there and I've got the books right there and then some cardboard which I use to spray things and you can see all the books over in the corner there. Um, most of this isn't even all the armies I have. I've been doing this for 19 years now. Um, Flames of War was my very first miniatures game that I ever uh, played and uh, well as far as building and painting miniatures. I did you know hero clicks before that um, I think Hero Clicks and there was a Star Wars one that we played quite a bit, but uh, right about when my oldest uh, son was, my wife was pregnant with him, that was when I really started on it. So I guess let's start at the top. So this portion of the bland gaming layer here, this is just a corner of it, shows that I have a deep rooted love for Transformers. Um, I liked the first movie, uh, but that's about it. After that, I think they just kind of strayed too much. Um, I've gone back and watched the cartoon, and it hasn't aged very well. Um, I think, though, somewhere between the movie and the old cartoon and the old comic books, uh, there's a really, really cool canon that's in there that I have just... And it's so something, something that is so incredibly awesomely 80s, and I love the 80s, as many of you know. Um, anyhow, and then I've got my Things from the Flood, uh, poster that I went ahead and ordered there. Um, I like Tales from the Loop better than Things from the Flood, but that is such a awesome painting. I just could not say no to that. Freely had a sale on posters. I was like, oh, this is so cool. So I bought one for myself and one of my players, Jade, is a teacher. So I went ahead and bought a poster for her, and I think she put it up in her classroom, and it's just, it's such a cool, uh, such a cool poster. Uh, and then there is my Conan sword, which Mrs. Bland Gaming actually surprised me with one year for Christmas. It won, she won Christmas. Uh, the last two Christmases I have won with the super gift, but that was definitely her year there. Um, so let's take a look at some of the stuff that I like to build and paint. Uh, we'll start with the Team Yankee stuff here, which I think I've been only playing that for about the last uh, six or seven years or so. But mostly I started uh, with the Flames of War stuff. Um, little trigger alert. Um, I mark my countries with their flags of origin. 
Um, so there are in this video, there are pictures of uh, the Nazi flag to represent my German units. Uh, I know that some people get offended by that, and I apologize for that. Um, but um, I'm kind of a history person, so uh, you know I wanted my units to be as historically accurate as possible. So um, trigger warning: if uh, if that's something that you find offensive, um, it's not certainly that I anything that I condone. Uh, it's just uh, placed here on these containers for historical significance. That's all. Um, Anyway, so back to Team Yankee. So, you know, this is my office here. Uh, my primary army for Team Yankee that I built and painted was uh, British. I started out playing British. The reason why they're not in my office here is because um, they're all done painted. They're, all, they're stored out in the garage because they were my very first one. Uh, my second army that I got was actually Polish. Uh, and then my third army, which I haven't painted at all, they're just built, are my uh, United States Marines. Which is ironic, because I spent some time in the United States Marines, and yet, I don't know, it's it's strange with historical games. I actually, my favorite are British. I, I really enjoy playing British in all sorts of historical games. Um, anyway, so let's have a look at my Polish here. They were my first, each of my friends... We all picked an initial army, and then our second army, we always try and choose the other side so that we can have a certain degree of variance. So uh, when I got my second army I, and I was looking at the Warsaw Pact Nation, I really loved the history of Poland, um, especially during World War II. Poland was one of the very first Warsaw Pact Nations to join NATO afterwards, so I have a lot of respect for uh, the tenacity and fighting spirit of the Polish people. So, um, okay. This is kind of, so let me talk about my storage solutions. What I do is I buy these, you can get these at Michael's, and uh, they're these containers that have these trays in them, you know, and then I go ahead and I use like, this is like a shelf kind of liner so that your miniatures don't slide around in there. It's really cheap. It's a lot cheaper than buying, uh, you know, a hundred dollar bag. I, I want to say these are like 20 bucks for one of these just containers here. And then if you get bleed over, if you get extras, um, because our collections have a tendency to grow, uh, nerds have a problem of buying too much, uh, then you you can just buy these extra cases here at Michael's. And these are, I wanna say these are like five or six bucks and everything, so. Um, so why don't we go ahead and start at the top, so. So listen, I am not an like an awesome painter. I am um, I've maintained a B average in my life, so I would probably call myself maybe a B, you know, a B minus on some miniatures that I've done, and maybe a B plus on others. Uh, but if you guys ever want to um, get some, if you want me to do some painting videos, uh, let me know. I'd be happy to like show you how I paint my miniatures to get them to turn out the way they were. Um, these SU-22s are the air support option for the Polish. Um, I loved painting these. These were a lot of fun. My Polish, just to tell you right off, I went with a winter theme, and you'll also see them on my World War II Soviets. I actually went with a winter theme. So I did the winter camouflage. Um, admittedly, this camo pattern is loosely based off of modern um, uh, a modern camouflage pattern that I saw. Of all things, it was on a frog foot. Um, I think it was a, I want to say it was an Ukrainian frog foot, but this is an SU-25 frog foot. In the game, you can run these as Soviet uh, for air support. I got these, but then I was like, well, I kind of want to keep my units Polish. And then when the SU-22s came out, I was like, yeah, I'm going to jump on those. So I also keep my aircraft stands, and you can see the rotor blades from my Heinz in here because no one plays, uh, you know, Warsaw Pact Nations without Heinz. That's just not cool. Uh, so these are these are my miniatures. I play primarily a mechanized infantry force. Um, I have some T-72s here, and then I've uh, got some T-62s. The T-62s I got on clearance. 
And after I bought the T62s, I realized that the poles don't run T62s. So what I wind up doing, and I don't want to get too technical on you, but I run them as a separate Soviet support formation. And then I went ahead and just painted them with Polish markings because you know what, it's a game. We can do whatever we want. Um, and with the winter, I painted the Polish, I, I used just basically Soviet infantry because that's what Battlefront does, the, the producer of it. And then I basically just um, painted them the colors of, of Polish infantry, what they would normally be. And then I even on the little patches that they have on their shoulders, I actually made those into a little Polish kind of flag patch kind of thing. Uh, that's an RPG unit. Oh, let's just show you an infantry unit. These are, so these are plastic. These, these are the, the Soviet plastic ones. You can see them with the AKs right there. Um, anyway, they, and then I put snow, grass, and then I went ahead and bought some of the flocking. Oops, I'm about ready to drop my phone. Doggone arthritis, I can't hold my, yeah, hold my, my camera up that long. Uh, so I have lots and lots. The Warsaw Pact nations are horde armies, um, even the Poles. So lots and lots of those. Um, my T-72s, I used a different camouflage pattern so that it was easy to tell them. Uh, apart. Um, mostly the Polish, they do like these white crosses on top. I wanted something a little bit more snazzy, but I was not happy with the camouflage pattern that I used on those. Okay, so this is the heart of my T-72, of, excuse me, of my Polish unit, and it's BMPs. And I use these BMPs to at least carry the infantry into battle. Um, and then you can see in the back, I've got some Shilkas for air support. And I got some, oh, what are they? SA6s, I believe is what they're called. And you can also see that what one thing, oh, and then these, my Danas, are my absolute favorites. Um, they're, they're like a big artillery unit. And I have a battery of six of those. So one thing that I did do is I painted... The, I used a different camouflage pattern for, so these are my infantry carriers here. I used a different camouflage pattern for my scout group. And then this uh, BMP is actually an observer for my artillery. Uh, we've got more Danas back here. I have some printed, what are those SA-10s? I haven't gotten around, I never use them. So I haven't really been motivated to paint those. Um, and then as you can see, this is the, uh, this is how the Danas work. They've got that big gun on the back. They're just, they're such a cool model and they kick butt in the game. Uh, this is my company commander. So his little BMP, what I did was I painted a little Polish flag on the back of a hull and on the back of the turret to indicate that he's my company commander. Uh, so those are my Polish. Um, I'm not really going to show you my Marines because they are not painted yet. So there's nothing much to see. Uh, these are my spillover Americans for World War II. As you can see, authenticity, history, because history. Uh, I went ahead and, oh no, I, I must have done that on my uh, World War II sailing one. That flag is not accurate. That's not accurate. And here I was like talking myself up like I was awesome or something. Um, so here we've got some of my British. Oh, these are spillover. Um, there is a company called Postage Stamp Airplanes, and they uh, release these airplanes that are the perfect size uh, for if you play Flames of War or even um, Team Yankee. They come painted. They look like this. This is this is a pretty good representation. The paint job's not bad, you know. And these are metal. They're heavy. They're really cool. Uh, planes. So anyway, the only P-40s in the mid-war, uh, if you play British, or Americans for that matter, um, you can only run P-40s or for the British also you can run Hurricanes. And the only model that they had for um, the postage stamp was like a Flying Tiger model. So what I did is I sprayed it, painted over the top of it. I actually was able to buy the decals online and I converted this into a... Um, into a British, something that you would see in Sicily or North Africa. Uh, this is my objective. Objectives are something that you have to go ahead and it's like a little British HQ. I cut out a little flag and put it on top of the, uh, 
on top of the HQ there. And then I also have a knocked out Sherman that I use. These are very old. I think you can't even buy these molds anymore, but I have this knocked out Sherman that I use. Now this just recently, cause this is my spillover pack. I just recently painted some six pounders. I have had these six pounders for like 18 years and I never got around to painting them. And just while I was sick, I just painted these just recently. And they're kind of cool. They got some little rubble going on around there and stuff. So, um, interestingly enough, what I do with my guns, when I paint guns, is I paint. First thing I do is I base them and I do not glue the gun on. And then I paint the models entirely separately. And then I even base the models. And then when the models are sprayed, based, completely done, the very last thing I do is glue the gun into place. So it's a lot easier to paint your miniatures that way. Uh, these are my Italians. Funny story, uh, this is World War II. Not that we're talking. Uh, with my Italians, um, I remember when the Italians first came out, this is a Bersolieri company. When they first came out, I was like, who would want to play Italians? Oh, sorry, Megatron. This artist friend of mine made this. Isn't that cool? He used like he used uh, the boxes from the toys when I was younger. And I've had that thing for gosh, 30, 35, 40 years. And he made this for me when I was a child. And it has been in my room, in my college dorm room, whatever. That was actually boxes from when I had the jet fire and I actually had Megatron, so Let's move this over here so we're not bothering Megatron. He's not one to be trifled with. Okay, so anyway, um, I bought the Bersalieri set, but I had also at that time bought Russian, so I really wanted to um, portray my Italians as Eastern Front, but I was still running them out of the Africa book. So I painted these. These are actually historically accurate for Italians that were fighting in... Um, Sicily or on the Eastern Front, but uh, these are definitely modeled in their desert bursalieri. Some of them are wearing shorts. Um, a lot of people sit there and go, oh, well, that's a unique play on it. So I get some points for that, but this is the big Lancia da 90. It's the, the Italian 88 truck kind of thing. Um, and then I went ahead and painted the, oh, let me see if I can get them out of here little I love these little tanks uh, these are absolutely terrible for um, going after vehicles the Italians are very dependent on their anti-tank guns uh, for going after vehicles but those are, are really great for anti-infantry or going after um, guns and stuff like that this is one of my Bersaglieri, um infantry units that I painted and you can see that these they're wearing the desert hat in here and I just you know I just painted them like they were from Europe as if they were in Europe so uh here we have an objective I love it this guy's having spaghetti here so and I put a little Italian flag up in his HQ because consistent with like what the British were doing and then he's got his meal right here. This guy's bent over because I think one too many times I've been, he's about to snap there, so I don't want to bend him back. Um, and this guy's almost like he's taking an order from him, which I love it. And the commander's just standing there with his stick going, all right, you guys, I will eat my calzone. Let me know how the battle goes. Uh, so these are my Italians. Okay, let's go ahead and back. As you can see, I've got, with my Italians, I've got uh, three cases full. I just recently, a um, buddy of mine who runs, he's just getting his British started. We split the Tobruk box set. I recommend you do that. Um, okay, so let's go to my Russians. I've been working on my Russians quite a bit here because um, a buddy of mine who's just getting into Flames of War right now is building Finns. And I already owned Russians. I had like a Russian infantry battalion. 
but I was like, well, let's get the armor and let's kind of get that going. And um, so I just started really beefing up my Russians so that I could play against his Finns and we could do Winter War. Uh, this here, that's another postage stamp airplane. Uh, I did that. That's how it came painted. Looks pretty good, you know. You can see some of my winter camouflage T-34s. These guys have the 85 millimeter gun. These guys are the standard, I think it's a 70 millimeter, 75 millimeter gun. Um, so, ooh, can we see this? Here we go, if we get this stuff out of the background. So, it's really easy. All you do is dab on, you use a sponge and dab on the white paint. These are primed, haven't been painted yet. Uh, I just got these in my Christmas stocking and just painted these guns. These are anti-tank, late war anti-tank guns. And then this artillery battery is pretty new. I'm just painted that. But much like, this is rest of my hands out. Oh, excuse me, my Russians here. Much like my, um, uh, my poles, I painted these in a winter theme. Uh, I painted these a few years ago, so I hadn't really perfected my winter, um, my winter techniques yet, but just a few. So I went ahead and used uh, paper to do the, the paper is two plied, it's two sided. And then I used just Elmer's glue to, pay, to glue it onto the model. And then I went ahead and painted black along the back line of the flagpole there. Um, and then I used my fingers to just put a kink into it to make it look like it's, and this guy's like, I think this is the company commander. And then I'll show you, I think I have a commissar over here. He's pretty cool. Is this him or is this him? I can't remember which guy it is. I think it's one, maybe I have two of them. But the commissars are noted by the blue hats. And you use these guys. These guys actually, uh, if they are with your units, your units fight harder. They're more motivated, I should say, which makes sense. Um, at the time when I built my Russians, they did not have... Uh, knocked out T-34. So what I did is I took a I took a Sherman tank, knocked out Sherman tank objective that you could buy, and I went ahead and made it a Lend-Lease Sherman, and it turned out, I think, pretty nice. I put snow on it. Looks pretty good. Um, and then I... Oh, this is another interesting piece. This wagon was something for the first or second edition of Flames of War. You needed to have a wagon with your troops to, I don't know, something along the lines of like supplying them. And uh, I found that very, very deliciously Russian. Um, okay, I'm gonna sit on the butt. Let's see if I can see more of these here. Oh, it looks like just a whole bunch more infantry. I've already seen that, that's kind of boring. These are a lot of my vehicles that I have done. Um, some of my tanks. Uh, I will cry if I drop this while I'm trying to hold it one-handed. Um, these are my T-34s, more T-34s. Uh, there's some primed SU-122s, haven't painted them yet. SU-152s, put a little frost on those. I haven't painted my rocket trucks on. And I haven't painted my KV-1s. These were KV-85s, which were in first edition Flames of War, but you're not able to use them in in this current edition of Flames of War, which breaks my heart. So I don't know if I might, you know, I might use those uh, as proxy those as something else. Um, SU-22s, SU I think, whoops. SU-122s, I think that's what these are. They're artillery pieces, mobile artillery pieces. They're pretty good, they're a mid-war thing. Okay, and British. Uh, this is my World War II British. I team Yankee British are out there. I play tons of British. Okay, so I have a rifle company, I have Royal Marines, uh, and then I also can run armor. As far as my paint pattern for my British, I went with a Tunisian paint uh, scheme for my Shermans. I just thought that paint scheme looked really cool. The only pictures I've ever seen of these, uh, of this paint style was actually on some, I want to say they're Grants, is what they're called. Uh, but the paint style, I just thought it was so awesome that I went ahead and did that. And then I went ahead and put some shrubbery on this one. Shrubbery. I put shrubbery on it. 
Um, because this is like a for mid war. This is the scout that basically um, he's the scout that uh, spots for your artillery. I go ahead and put some shrubbery on him, and then for late war, you use a Sherman. Same thing. Kind of put some shrubs on there. I was very careful not to put the shrubs in front of the hatches or any of the spots where they would normally look out. And then I used just a little bit of fishing wire and then painted it black to be the antenna on there so I can tell the difference between them. You know, and I'm a casual modeler. I don't do this stuff too terribly uh, much, but my... Sorry for the burp. Uh, it's just every once in a while when I'm holding it with my left hand, I hit the button by accident. My Royal Marines, um, the Marines, the Royal Marines in uh, Great Britain, you have to think of them. They are not as large and as uh, extensive as the United States Marine Corps. They are much more of a special forces type of unit. They're more akin to Navy SEALs, I would say, than a uh, very elite unit. Um, I met couple Royal Marines um, when I was off at Officer Candidate School. They were kind of over here on like a, I don't know, an exchange program or something. And those dudes were, they were tight. They were just badasses. Uh, I was very impressed with them. And yet they still had their very fancy accents, which was kind of cool too. Uh, so anyway, these Royal Marines, very awesome. Uh, one thing about me is I make a lot of gingers in, <laughs> in my units and stuff. So these guys are attacking Sword Beach. Uh, that's a Royal Marine example. I'm going to switch hands because my hands are cramping. And then I also have um, I have some uh, just regular uh, like a British rifle company here. And these are just an example of, um, if I can get it to focus, there we go. This is an example of my British rifle company. These guys in the rocky terrain. These guys are really modeled for North Africa, Sicilian. Um, but I mean, I can certainly run them as, as late war. And then I love these universal carriers. These are just so cool. Um, let's, can I focus? There we go. This guy, he's got the, he's got the Vickers machine gun up on top. And I used to, again, I used that same camouflage pattern because I don't care. You know, so pretty cool. Um, let's see what other things do I have to show you. I'm really proud of with these. Uh, you know, a lot of the same. Lots of artillery pieces. British are all about their artillery. Um, okay, well, let's go with this here. I can show you. You've already seen the objectives, but here are the British 17 pounders. And I put little shelled out trees on these just for fun. Sorry, it's blurry. Um, and you can see that these are modeled, these guys aren't wearing shirts, so these are modeled uh, as if they're from North Africa or Sicily, so even though they can be played in late war. And then uh, this is, those are anti-tank guns that I just showed you. This is more of the, you know, the 17-pounder, which is the, uh, oh, I'm sorry, the 25-pounder, which is the... Um, it's their main artillery piece. I have eight guns of these. So British love their artillery. And so these are kind of dusty. And then I also have for my mechanized units, I've got the priests, which are an American artillery unit uh, that is lend leased to the British. Are you going to focus or are we going to just sit here and blurry all There we go. Um, it's a cool little unit. Um, so the model itself is resin. And you can see there was a chip there uh, when I got it. And I just went ahead and painted bright silver on it so it looked like a piece had been, you know, shot off or blown off. I'm not, you know, I'm not building and painting this stuff to win in contests. Okay, uh, so let's go to our other column. Again, trigger warning, um, I do have authentic uh, World War II flags on these, so there are going to be some swastikas in this video here. And I apologize if you find that offensive. But uh, these are some of the more recent Germans. 
it. And I do not use an airbrush, by the way. I do these all by hand. Um, if you're going to play Flames of War, someone has to play the bad guys. And so that's kind of what I do. My Germans are not my favorites. Uh, I like my British and I like my... I like my British and my American probably the best. But um, if one of my friends is playing an allied nation, then I'll go ahead and I'll whip out my Germans here. Um, during World War II, what the Germans used to do, especially on the Eastern Front, and I use mostly Eastern Front for this, uh, they kept getting dive bombed by their own air support. So they wound up taking German Nazi flags and they would uh, lay them across the turret decks. Like this, this is a Panzer III. And they laid them across the turret decks. You saw that a lot in mid-war, early war, but not so much in late war. Because by late war, the Germans had lost air superiority on both fronts. This is a panther. Uh, panthers, from a game perspective, uh, I don't think they're worth the points. They're kind of super tanks, and they cost a lot of points for you. Um, but I would rather run Panzer IVs or Stugs. But, uh, gosh, they are pretty. They are just really pretty. And the effect, the way that I get the paint, the camouflage effect, is I just take a little sponge and dab on the camouflage splotches uh, so it almost looks like it is a... It looks like it's uh, been sprayed on there. Some of these here are hand-painted. These Germans here, I mean, they were probably my second army. Because like I said, I usually try to alternate. I get one good guy, then one bad guy, one good guy. So a lot of these miniatures are very, these were some of my very first ones and you can tell the quality is definitely not as good as some of uh, the other miniatures that I've painted. So like wait till we get into my, my Americans were my very first set and they're not very good at all. Um, this is, a hand-painted panther versus one using the dabbing technique uh, that I did. It's so about one one hundredth scale there, and that was just a uh, matter of fact. That camouflage pattern there, I actually got that off of a German uniform when I was looking online for inspiration. Okay. Oh, and here, I'll let you see the objective. The objective here is a knocked-out Panzer III. I think this is originally intended to be for Africa Corps because you can see the little uh, desert hats on there. But um, my stuff is mostly, you know, my armies are themed Eastern Front or Sicily or in late war even Western Front. So uh, I don't do any, much of the desert stuff. Early war, the Germans really were into the gray. Like this kind of thing here. This is a Panzer III. So this is a gray Panzer III, and then by late war, they were switching more to like this mustard type of color here. Here's one that I haven't painted yet. Um, and these are Panzer IVs right here. Stoops, which are like assault guns. Okay. Uh, do I have anything else interesting in the Germans to show you? Uh, you don't want to see the guns and stuff. Oh, those, those are the Stukas there that are the postage stamp air points. They turned out really, again, those are really good ones. Um, okay, so now let's kind of see how far I've come and how far I've grown with my Americans. So this is a good example of, these were some of the very first models that I'd ever painted. And although they're not bad, um, I... They're historically inaccurate because in actuality, the web gear should not be green. The web gear would be like a kind of a khaki color. And their shirts are, should be more like a khaki color. Um, but I use like an American tan to do those. Um, here's a good example of, this was one of the very first tanks that I ever painted um, right here. I have named all of my tanks after uh, family members. So Virginia is actually my mom's name. So the Miss Virginia is a tank that's named after my mom. And this is one of my later Shermans that I did. Oh, do I have the one with them? Mm, I don't. 
I'll show you one of the later ones later, but um, this is one of uh, my stepmom and two of my grandmothers are named Mary. Mary Reed was a famous pirate, so I put a um, put a antenna on this one and then put a little pirate flag on there for fun. I thought that was pretty cool. So that is our that's our commander, and then we have a whole bunch of half tracks because the very first army that I ever built was a uh, U.S. mechanized infantry company, and uh, it did not do well. You know, mechanized infantry is very hard, hard army to play. And then I switched to a Sherman company, uh, tank company, and had a lot more luck. Uh, okay, let's see here. I want to find that one. Here are my priests, you know. Use the priests here, just like the British ones, you know. Gosh, I hope I don't drop that. Uh, there's a postage stamp airplane. Um, this objective here, the U.S. objective, I actually customized this. Uh, one of the um, half tracks, and this was one of the very first models I did, so it turned out pretty good. One of the half tracks I had did not have... Uh, the tread did, came without the tread in it. So I tried putting some bullet holes in the side of it, as you can see, and I just made it lurched up on its side. I dry brushed a lot of black on it to make it look like it had been burned out. And then this is hard to see, but this was like Flames of War used to release these bodies and whatnot. So, um, so anyway, that was one of my custom objectives that I made for my Americans. It's interesting though, my Americans are my favorites, but you know, of all of all the stuff I've painted, they're my least favorite. I just don't think I did a good job on these. I mean, some of the later model stuff I did a good job, but um so like here, this is one of my later tanks that I did. This is a 76 millimeter Sherman, also named after a uh, family member. And then I painted like this mouth on the front of it on the, those, these things were used to clear the hedgerows. Um, had some fun with that. And, oh, here we go. Okay, this is fun. Oh, did I just break something? Okay, uh, these are the same P40s that I used saw in the British box, but I painted these and configured these to appear like um, U.S. Army P40s from an early war. I mean, they've got mid-war markings on them because I could not find decals online for P-40s. I had to use decals. These actually go to a P-39 Air Cobra. So I've got some little... But um, but I made the best with what I had. And there was this... This was kind of cool. I liked the, the little pinups on the sides of them. They were very fun. A little sexist. For the course, at a time of... anyway, uh, so that that's my Americans. So, this is my Flames of War and my uh, my Team Yankee corner. Uh, if you want me to do some painting videos, let me know. Like I said, I don't spend a lot of time talking about anything other than RPGs because when I look at my views and my likes, uh, you know, they're pretty. They're pretty pitiful, but I do this for fun. I don't do this to make money or anything like that. Um, let me know. But it seems like you guys really like the role playing game stuff, so uh, I'll do. I'll try and focus most of my videos on that. But if you're interested in me giving you how to paint a miniature uh, at a B minus level of quality, I'd be happy to give you some instructions. So I'd be happy to show you how I do it, and maybe I can give you some inspiration. Anyway, in the meantime, this is Deeb. I think I'm going to go have some lunch and a second cup of coffee. And uh, in the meantime, everybody stay warm. I know that all across the United States today, there's going to be a, quite a winter storm, so everybody be warm, be safe. Remember, when you're driving on ice and snow, the secret is to drive slow. Okay, so drive slow. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Helps me get more content out there. 
uh, I, or not. I don't care as long as you're here. You know, if you're going to leave a comment, say something nice, um, and I will do the same. So uh, thanks again for watching, and this is Deeb, your boring and bland host, signing off.